Hello, welcome to my live call. This is Jeff Out Gilberts, and it comes with a question. What is eating your team and you don't know it? talking about and for those of you that have uh, know about me you know that I've been in network marketing now for over 40 years so I love sharing a lot of what I've learned in my journey on these live calls I started in this business totally broke sold a junk truck to get started put $200 into my business and ever since then for that's been about 28 years ago I've been full-time in this profession this great profession of network marketing and I'm acknowledging some people. Hello, Lenia in Tennessee. Good to see you. And John in Baltimore. Good to see you, John. Hope you're doing well. Romel, what is going on? Good to see you. Good to see you. So early morning in the Philippines. Yeah, man. Having lovely weather today, fall weather. Just enjoying it. Uh, don't have the long days that we used to the daylight. I'm sort of missing that, but hey, Michelle, honey, good to see you. And let's see who else is going to join us. Zita in Florida, how are you? And Hadas, nice to see you on the call, Hadas. Yeah, from Winnipeg, she's in Canada. Nice to see you, Hadas. Nice to see you on the call. Yeah, um, so yeah, the days aren't as long, but man, they're beautiful when they're, uh, you know, just incredible fall weather. Zero, nice to see you. Good to see you on the call as well. And who else have we got out there? Yeah, okay, awesome. So here's the thing, um, uh, tonight I started this with a question. What is eating your team and you don't even know it? How is that possible? Could our teams, you know, could something be eating them? You know, I think about it, uh, some of you have seen my bear videos, right? So there's a lot of wildlife out here, a lot of wildlife. And I remember uh, it was fall season, October like this, and I've got a lot of big, huge pumpkins. Some of these things are 100, 150 pounds. These are heavy suckers, right? Big old pumpkins. And, and so I've got this one area where I actually do a fall stage. I'll put big oversized pumpkins, then hay bales, uh, gourds, uh, scarecrows, corn stalks around the, the four corners of the trees that encompass the stage area. I mean, I go way out on this thing, right? And, uh, and the funny thing is I have to hot wire around this stage because if I don't hot wire around the stage, um, it'll be destroyed in a day. I mean, in an evening. 
I mean, the bears will do it. I mean, they will absolutely do it. <laughs> I mean, I've seen a bear or saw the evidence of one when I came out one morning and he devoured almost the entire pumpkin. I mean, big old huge pumpkin. There was about a 10 inch hole and inside it was, that was it. It was just the skin of the pumpkin. That was all that was left. Anyway, Asila, nice to see you. Um, and so anyway, I learned lessons and uh, after a lot of destruction, right? And so I remember that one fall season, I'd made it through. It was uh, the end of November. I said, okay, uh, I think it was probably really December 1st. And I said, okay, I'm gonna have to take everything down, but man, isn't this incredible? This 150 pound pumpkin. And I, and I thought, but they didn't get you. And I touched it and, I, and it moved. And I'm like, what? And what had happened was they came up from below and, and carved out a hole at the base of the pumpkin and went up inside the pumpkin. And I don't know for what period of time they had done that, but they ate that whole thing out and I didn't even know it. So again, what was eating my pumpkin? I didn't know. It goes with the question, what's eating your team? Many would say, I don't know. Well, I'll tell you that I don't know uh, could cost you an entire team. You have to know. You cannot not know. But I promise you one thing, something will be eating them. And, uh, and, and of course, there's different things that do that. We could talk about that. But, of course, there's the media. You know, there's so much negativity in the media. That's the first thing I tell leaders is don't watch it, okay? You actually expect them to tell you encouraging things? I don't think so. So why would you want to watch it? So I would avoid that. But when it comes to uh, what we do as leaders, one of the things that, one of the big mistakes that many make is the assumption that your leaders in your team know what they need to know. We call that the curse of knowledge. The curse of knowledge is that assumption that we assume that they know what we know. And that is not the case. I mean, you might post something on, in Facebook. It might be a training. Uh, it could be a video. It could be just something for them to read. And they're going, ooh, wow, awesome, inspiring. And you're going, um, really? It's not really any of that. Uh, I thought you knew this. You know, and I've noticed that too. In many posts I've made over the years at different times, you know, the, the people that would comment on it, and I'm like, wow, I thought you already knew all this. So one thing became very clear to me is that, and this is really the second part of the problem, that most people think that their responsibility only rests on those they sponsor. So that would be most likely based on your compensation plan uh, is that that would be your first level people, people that you personally enroll, that that is it. My responsibility is to train them. It's up to them to train their people. We also, we assume that they're going to do that. Why wouldn't they do that? Because you did that for them, right? You train your, 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 the people that you personally sponsor, uh, maybe send them links that review this. Let's talk about it. You make sure maybe your onboarding video, whatever that is. And you assume that they're going to do exactly what you did. Of course they would do that. Of course they would do that. That is a, a, until you decide to <laughs> go down several levels deep and then you start talking to people and you find out that's not happening. Matter of fact, it's not happening for a lot of your people. And that's part of the problem here. The breakdown of teams is a direct result that they're not being trained. They're just simply not being trained. They don't know. And we assume that the people that we enroll on our front line, that they're going to duplicate that. 
And so some, for that reason, they just don't ever go beyond their first level. But then they say, what is, this team is not doing anything. It's not going anywhere. Well, that's right. Because there's something eating your team and you don't know it. And what that is, is the lack of training. Because you had the assumption that they would duplicate, your first level leaders would duplicate what you did for them. And that didn't happen. Or maybe they did, and the problem really began on your somewhere on your third level, somewhere further deep. All the duplication seemed to stop. And so that's the problem. Again, the first is the assumption that people know what you know. The second is we assume that they will duplicate whatever we train, and they don't do it. So, as a matter of fact, I, I can remember that and, and well go back and here's here's a here's another problem the problem is that people rely on data they rely on data you go to your back office you look at the volume in your team you look at the volume in the specific legs that you have or the teams that you have um, and uh, it looks good right looks very good that's right, because that's data. But what does data not tell you? Data doesn't tell you what's going on in the lives of your leaders. That's what it doesn't tell you. But see, many would just look at the data and say, yep, yeah, it's good, man. Team's producing, that's good. Well, no, you don't know what's eating your team. You don't know it. And, and so I remember this point was, very clear to me one time when I went to a different country, we had a big event and when we were on stage and waving at everybody, the confetti's coming down and you know, it's like boom, boom, you know, it's like the fireworks are going off and I looked at one of the leaders and I said, how are you doing? He said, not so good, Jeff. We need to talk. And I'm like, oh, oh really? <laughs> and I ended up delaying leaving the next day because that's when I was supposed to go out and I stayed back. And I'm glad I did, because I was able to see that I, there, there was a big problem brewing. And that's the, that's the thing, your, your back office data doesn't tell you that. A lot of these rock stars in network marketing have no idea. They're on, they're on a very short uh, career run right now. They really are, because they don't understand these things I'm talking about yet. Because they got it all down to messaging Zooms, their Facebook groups, but frankly, they don't even know the people, most of the people in their team, they don't even know them. And so that's the thing, we have to slow down if we're going to speed up. And for those of you that have seen some of my tap rooting training, where you drop down, and that's what I would do, drop down and work with a specific leader, create some exciting activity with that person, the heat goes up. And the people above start scrambling because they want to get paid on it. They want to get paid on it. You know, I, I learned that, you know, you can talk about the mansion on the hill, the Ferrari in the driveway. Uh, that doesn't motivate them. But as soon as they got something down below them that's growing, something that they can make some great money on, then the fear of loss is a bigger motivator than the fear, than, than the pleasure of gaining, the pleasure of gaining. The fear of loss is a much bigger motivator than the pleasure of gaining. And that's really what motivates people. And so I've seen that once you light that fire at the bottom, the heat goes up, they start scrambling. So that, that's important to, again, going back to that many think that their responsibility is to only work with those people they personally enroll is a very foolish, foolish strategy. You will not be in this business very long. You will not be successful if that is your strategy. I would not do that at all. See, it never mattered to me where the volume came from, but it was always logical to me. If I drop down below, light a fire, heat goes up, everybody is scrambling. And what's interesting, you may not have a lot of width on some of your levels that you get paid on, okay? But as soon as you create that kind of a scenario, all of a sudden people are starting to go wide. Why is that? Because they want to get paid. 
they want to get paid on what you did. So they start going wide because they have to. They have to develop new legs. They have to rank at a decent rank if they're going to make some very good money. And so they'll go wide as a result. Next person will go wide as a result. New people coming in, they're filling in on different levels. Volume is increasing on levels where it was very light, very poor, and all of a sudden you start seeing volume filling in on all those levels because you did that one thing, you dropped down below. And that's the reason why so many don't make it because they think I just have to work with the people I enrolled. I don't want to have to deal with anyone else. Some might say, well, Jeff, that's work. Well, that's part of the word that was in network marketing. Work was in network. <laughs> that's what we do. That's what we do. You know, it's interesting that when I look at it in my lifetime and, and the wealth that I made in network marketing never came from my frontline people. It never came from the people I enrolled. It's a fact. It always came from people down in my organization, several levels deep, and they, those were the drivers. And yes, uh, in working with them and creating heat, the heat did go up, and those other people who were asleep woke up and said, oh my God, fear of loss, right? Scrambled, and they got at decent positions, not great positions, but decent rank positions where they make good money. But those aren't the drivers. So it's really true that your wealth comes from your depth. It doesn't come from your width. It doesn't come from the, you know, you're told that all the time by your, your upline, you know, sponsor, go wide, get, get more, get more. I'm, well, you can do that. You know, to me, it's a different definition for a job. You're trading time for money. To me, it always made more sense to work with those people, create strong teams, and then set your goals where you want to rank in your compensation plan, whatever that's going to be. And that was my goal. So in my case, it was three strong legs. Three strong uh, legs. Uh, how you doing, Christina? Good to see you. Um, and uh, Mindy, how you doing? So your wealth will, as my experience has proven, will come from your depth. It's really true. Because I, I remember when I met Ray Higdon uh, three years ago, we had lunch together, getting to know one another, and he thought I was a, you know, a sponsor monster, right? Because <laughs> I've done so well in network marketing all through the years and all that, so, you know, you know, I, I wake up with uh, new downlines every day, right? <laughs> I remember him asking me the question, you know, he said, uh, how much, so how many people do you sponsor every day? And I went, I went uh, no, I don't do that. He said, what? I said, no, you don't understand. I don't, I don't do that. I haven't sponsored in 15 years, Ray. He said, what? I said, yeah, you gotta understand. In our compensation plan, uh, all you gotta do is build three teams, three strong teams, build them to China, drive them suckers to China. You're done, man. That's what I did. And I did that a long time ago. Yeah. So my, my work is in my neck, my network. My work is in my network. That's where I go. I don't have to look for new people. I don't. He was so surprised. All companies have different kind of plans. I get that. Some companies have unilevel plans. Unilevel plans don't pay, but so many levels deep. That's it period. Okay. So the only way you can create more money is you got to go wider. That's it. Generational plans pay very deep. You don't have to go as wide. You go deep, build your teams out. Most of your money is generational. Some companies have binary plans. So you, you have different, you know, rules in those kind of plans. So either way, even with binary, very similar to unilevels, you know, unilevel goes this way, binary goes that way. Either way, it's a line, man. If you take that and it's either way you're working because they're sponsoring down into their lines, what, you know, even in binaries. So, uh, but the point is that uh, 
those were the kind of plans always I always attracted to though were generational plans that paid very deep because otherwise you're, you're you know you're just gonna be working trading time for money and I didn't want to do that so but anyway so uh, uh, so here's the thing that um, when you start growing you want to keep it going that's the key and that means when you start growing then storms are going to come you're going to have that in your downline matter of fact the, the bigger your team grows you're going to see that with your time you're going to spend less activity sponsoring people and more act, more of your time is going to go into working with people in your team later it's going to go into putting out fires and some of the storms between leaders and trying to create peace you know you play different roles in different times as your group grows that's all part of it it's all part of it it's an incredible journey but just understand that there will be things that eat at your team and you need to know what it is and then some of the things that can help you you know cut down on the chaos just remember what Winston Churchill said and I, this is this is you know I don't know I, I had somebody interview me the other day on a podcast and he said what is one of the you know just a a, a statement uh, somebody said that just you comes to your head a lot and I said oh Winston Churchill and he said well what was it what did he say success is not final success is not final that means Every day you wake up, you know, you have to pay attention and see what's eating your team. Find out what the what you can do, what what value you can give to help your leaders, make them better leaders, and also make sure that they're enjoying this journey in your company and being a part of your your team. So here's a couple of things that you might want to do: is first of all, document what you teach. Always document what you teach. What, what do I mean by that? I, in other words, you're, you're really not duplicatable if you're not, if you always have to show up and you always have to train. You're like the rock star and everyone goo goo, goo goos and gagas when you show up, right? I've had, I've been in uplines or had uplines like that in the past. They don't want to document anything. They just want to be the rock star. Nope, don't want to do that. I want to be the person that puts it in writing, PDF or in a video, and then let that new person read it so that they know what they're doing. Um, so make sure that you document what you teach, your training videos, everything. Make sure you get, and here's the other thing, get good at collecting your email addresses. Now your company might provide that for you, in your back office so if that if they do that's a great thing if not you you know you you need to collect it as you can in whatever ways that you can so that you can start sending out emails to your downline it could be just training tips it can be recognition in the email emails are very important because in the event that you don't have a group or a social media platform uh, if that disappears on you the only way you're gonna be able to reach people is through email unless you have their phone numbers both are good but you definitely want to get good at collecting emails so you can start sending out training content recognition things like that third is the Facebook groups for sure if you don't have a face group uh, Facebook group to plug into start one but if your upline has one, it's better to leverage on on that because it's a lot of it's a lot of work when you you know want to start your own Facebook group. And keep in mind the time that you would spend in creating that, uh, maybe the content for that uh, that you're not doing the business. Uh, that you might consider that support, and that's right, it would be. But I'm just saying, but if you're in the building mode right now and that's where your focus, your time needs really to go, then you're better off to leverage on a pre-existing group. As long as the culture is good in that group, then that's what you need to do. Now, if you don't have that, nobody in your upline has ever provided that, then start one. 
And if you have some upline that, that let's say that their, their culture is good, that it's a fit for you, then invite them to be a part of it so that they can share. In that group itself, uh, you can start doing coaching calls. And that is for those leaders in your team that you can just you know simply put out a post, hey, who would like to jump on a coaching call with me? Reach out to me and let me know if you want to be coached or if you have a question or something that you wanna be coached on, we can get together and, and talk about it. The important thing is, is that that is done live. Others get to see it. If you do it privately, like on a phone call or on a Zoom call with just you and that leader, the leader benefits from it, but no one else does. Because others, they love to see those kind of calls because when they see that a person is having problems in an area or they need some coaching in an area, they're thinking, hey, that's me, that's me, that's me. They're so glad to hear it. And they're, and they're so glad to, to see that other people struggle with it as well. Now you might be thinking, well, Jeff, I'm still trying to get my business going. I'm not such a good coach. I mean, hey, listen, don't tell yourself those stories. You know, when are you gonna be the leader? When are you going to be the leader? You, you just gotta do it. You just, the day, you, this is the day I'm gonna do it, man. I'm gonna be the leader. And, and, and here's, so to make it easier on yourself when you do coaching calls and all that, just simply ask the person to send you the question. Say, hey, message me your questions so I can prepare for that. And, and if your mind goes blank when you read the question, then send it to a person in your upline who's experienced. Say, hey, how would you answer that? And when they give you the answer, you're going to be the brilliant one. Yes, you're the leader. You're the brilliant one in front of your team. On a Facebook live call in your Facebook group, you're doing a coaching call with your leader. And you're answering their questions. Now, you might, you'd have to probably zoom into that call, which is fine. So you can zoom into your Facebook group and you can have that coaching session. You have all your notes. There might be some points that your upline said. You can expound on those points. You can do some research on those points. You can do it. And, uh, and so in doing that, you're prepared so that you get on that call and you're ready to give value to your team. See, that's all part of your growth. You know, you don't know something until you teach it. So yes, there's gonna be people that are gonna be watching, they're gonna be uh, built up, strengthened by what you're, what you're doing, but the one who gains the most out of it is you. It's all part of your personal growth. So that's really the, the third thing. And, the, and then the fourth is train by video. Make sure that what you do, you know, your, your, your pin posts, your, your learning units in your Facebook group, everything like that, you, you can put your videos, put them in a category so that people can refer to those videos. When they, as a matter of fact, you can tag somebody, your pe you can train your leaders how to tag people in, in videos uh, that they need to see, especially your first, you know, the onboarding video. That would be very important. Now here's the fifth way that could help you make sure that nothing's eating your team. And that is, you know, is virtual events. Now we have the Rank Makers live virtual event coming up October here, 8th through uh, 10th, right? So, um, by the way, if you you or your downline need any tickets to that and you want it for half price, half what it would cost you, let me know. Just send me a message. But virtual events are going to be probably the only events you can leverage on this year and maybe most of next year, we'll see. But it could be that most of next year, it'll be that way as, as well. So then what we have to do is adapt and change and promote these events. Now, just, just make sure that you know what's happening. One, one thing I liked about Ray's event is that Ray, he has a lineup of speakers. He's got a little bit of a bio on the speakers and all that, you know who what's coming you know who you're putting your downlines in front of, okay? Uh, some, you know, virtual live events, if they don't post that, I'm like, mm, no. <laughs> I, matter of fact, does, 
somebody was doing that. I won't say who, but you know, and I'm like, no, I'm, you know, thanks for the invitation, but, uh, uh, you know, I don't know who the, who the trainers are without knowing that there's no way because I've been to some, um, venue events, uh, at different times in the United States and some of the speakers I did not consider credible. So if they're not credible, uh, I'm not going to put my people in front of them. Um, because again, they're being influenced, right? And I want to make sure they're influenced by the right people. Uh, and here's the sixth thing that you might want to do. So nothing's eating your downline and that is get good at Zoom calls. Start doing Zoom training with your leaders, recognition on Zoom with your leaders. Uh, you might want to have uh, certain training days. Uh, times you get together and you recognize your leaders. It's amazing to me that a lot of my leaders around the world that were not inclined toward using social media and technology so much are doing so well at it. Are doing so well at it. I mean, they're breaking ranks. They're, they're, you know, they're growing. So this is the new frontier. This is the new norm, right? That's what it is. So we get good at it. That's what we do. So I want to thank all of you for getting on the call tonight and uh, look forward to, uh, I'll put out some value tomorrow and then I'll see you Wednesday, okay? And uh, on another subject. And uh, yeah, get your people to, if you got some value, you could share this. And anyway, thanks again for joining me this evening. All of you are totally awesome. I'll see you Wednesday. Take care.